One of my most frequently asked questions is, which good cheap laptop can I buy for under £300, which is about $375? So on today's episode, we're going to take a look at which cheap good laptop to buy, if they exist, and if not, what are the options? Roll the intro. Hey Nim Tags and welcome back. This is Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. So this question comes from Marion Anthony Fatoni D'Amico. Been subscribed for ages, love your videos. Please can you recommend a laptop for me that costs 250 to 300 pounds? New or used, I don't mind. I need a decent one that is fast and will not fail on me. Okay, Fat Tony. So my first response to anyone who asks me this question is, if you need a computer, I do not recommend you buying a single laptop. Instead, you should get yourself a desktop. Now hold on all you laptop lovers, put your pitchforks down and watch the whole video first. And I also don't mean to just go to any retailer and buy a desktop off the shelf. Building your own comes to mind. Also, I don't mean getting one of those SFF, which is the small form factor ones. They are usually proprietary designs with proprietary components. So the cost of each component will be a bit more expensive than the cost of a normal desktop component. That's a different video for another time. So am I being very subjective here or is it based on personal experience or is it based on professional experience having worked on so many laptops, including completely stripping them off down to their naked core and then putting them back together, sometimes just for funsies. I think a little bit of all the above mentioned. Let me explain. Here are a few laptops which were either left by customers or which I bought off of them for really cheap at the beginning of my repair career. It's been two years and since then, they're still waiting for my undivided attention and for some TLC. But to date, I have come to the conclusion that cheap laptops are just not worth the money or the effort. And although I need one sometimes, i.e. a laptop for my work, I still don't own one because I have not yet found one which would convince me to part with my hard earned cash. Here's an example. This Dell laptop was given away for free to me by a relative, which was uh, very slow. It was taking over five minutes to boot up and then even longer to open just about any application. Does that sound familiar to you? I covered that in this video entitled Troubleshoot and Fix a Slow Laptop Part 1. So this is essentially part two of that video. It has a Pentium dual core, came with Vista and three gigabyte DDR2 RAM. The battery also died so I need to keep it plugged in all the time. There is a couple of cracks in the screen bezel and frame, but nothing dire straight. So after diagnosing the problem to be the hard disk drive, I simply replaced it with a different drive, leaving everything else the same. And then I decided to pit it against two recently purchased laptops in the last six months, ergo end of 2016 and beginning of 2017. Each bought brand new for 300 pounds, so about $375 from Curry's and John Lewis respectively. The Dell has a Pentium dual core T4300 launched in Q2 of 2009, scoring 1246 average CPU mark, ranking 1660. The Asus has a more recent Intel Pentium N3700 launched in Q2 2015, scoring 1873 and ranking 1354. The HP also has a Q2 2015 AMD a6-7310 APU, score of 2621 and ranking 1071. The Dell laptop has only 3GB slower DDR2 memory as opposed to the HP and Asus both having more newer, faster DDR3 memory at 4GB and 8GB respectively. They all have Windows 10 with similar updates. I did a few boot up tests and a normal usage test. The following couple of footage is only to illustrate a general point and not meant as a complete scientific test to measure every task speed down to a T. Surprisingly, the on paper slower and older Dell laptop booted up in only 17 seconds, followed by HP 19 seconds and finally Asus 34 seconds. And that's because I replaced the hard drive with an SSD in the Dell. This one. Here, the Asus was an outlier in this specific boot-up test as it did perform better in this earlier test at only 24 seconds, as different boot-ups will vary depending on what type of background process may have been occurring prior to the last shutdown, which includes Windows updates. As for the HP, it took 27 seconds to reach the logging screen, but after typing in the password, it was taking forever to boot onto the Windows screen. So I reverted the HP back to its factory setting, 
which produced the results you saw in the earlier footage. If I were to be very precise in my test, I would have been taking the average of several boot up times. But like I said before, this is not a research paper, but rather an awareness raising exercise. And that brings me to the main point of the video, which is normal laptops, which has a normal mechanical hard drive like this one, spinning at 5,400 RPM, are the absolute bottleneck in most cases, which will slow the laptop down no matter what you do with it afterwards, and regardless of what other components you have in terms of the processor or the RAM. Meaning, you could still have the fastest processor in the world and the most amount of RAM, but your laptop will only be as fast, in this case as slow, as the 5400 RPM disk drive, the mechanical one. And it will only get slower with time, sometimes very soon after you purchase it. And that doesn't even account for faulty hard disks. Normal laptop hard drives are notorious for being one of the first components to easily break or become damaged in a laptop. And that's because of simple physics. Due to its mechanical design, with an arm reading over a spinning plate, like a record player, any shock applied to the laptop, like dropping it, will most likely cause damage. Just like any force applied on any moving object. SSDs, on the other hand, do not have mechanical parts, but rather they have flash memory, like a USB but much faster, hence it's less prone to physical damage. This SSD is not even a very fast one, it's one of the slowest one, which I bought about 3 years ago, so imagine what you could do with a better, faster SSD. Of course, the newer laptops in this test can actually beat the older Dell in other applications, such as maybe playing back 1080p videos on YouTube, or even other applications like editing, maybe, photos and videos to a certain degree. But these laptops at this price range is only targeted for people with social use, which means an SSD with most cases outperform any normal hard drive laptop at this price range in any daily tasks. Now, aside from the normal hard drive in a laptop, there are so many other reasons why a laptop is not a good idea for a main computer. Here's four of them out of so many more. Number one, they get clogged up very easily with dust, which causes overheating, which is never a good thing for any computer. And that can result in unexpected shutdowns, even fatal ones. Many laptops have terrible airflow designs. Often the ventilation is located at the bottom of the laptop, which means you cannot securely and safely place it on your lap or on any fabric surface like a sofa or a bed, which is ironic for a laptop, isn't it? Number two, all the components of a laptop usually cost a lot more to replace and to repair than a normal desktop. And a fault in a laptop is also usually much harder to troubleshoot than the counterpart desktop. The most expensive uh, part of a laptop to replace is often the motherboard, which can cost close to or even more than buying another cheap laptop. Number three, upgrades on laptops is very difficult. And if it's not difficult, it's very limited and the cost of upgrading does not justify the performance increase in any laptop. Number four, owners of a single computer system like a laptop often store all their data on the laptop's single hard drive, mostly without backing up anywhere else. So you can imagine these sobbing stories I come across quite often in terms of pictures and important assignments, which is meant to be handed in the next day, which all gets lost because the laptop drive is damaged. So parents, if you are considering buying a laptop for your kid, think again, because the child is mostly usually the one responsible to be breaking the laptop or spilling drinks on them. All right, there are more reasons. But what are the options then if a laptop is not the thing to buy? First, let me tell you that there are a few people who definitely need to buy a laptop, whether it's for their studies, their work, or even social reasons, but they are few and far between. Those people often are traveling or are very mobile due to their work, and a laptop is the only way to go. However, you will find that those people, usually they will invest in a higher priced laptop and not the cheap ends. MacBooks are usually a good choice for these people or any other brands, but with a higher price tag and of course higher quality. For the rest, I recommend a traditional desktop. If your argument is about space, then there are many smaller ITX form factor based desktops, which do not take much space at all. The prices for ITX based components are a bit higher than normal desktop prices, so do bear that in mind. Alternatively, you could also consider an all-in-one. However, do bear in mind that all-in-ones are no more than laptop components attached at the back of a monitor screen. 
So the replacement cost can usually be the same. However, it is slightly more easy to troubleshoot, fix and upgrade to a certain degree. As for you college or university students, you think you need a laptop to help you ace that course, right? Think again. First, it's really annoying to carry around your laptop with its charger and accessories in your bag. Next, your university or college does provide computers for use. Granted, it's not always free, but there's usually a booking system. And if you work around other students, you can usually get your work done there. Third, if you need a computer, public libraries is a place to look for because they do offer full access to computers. Again, you need to book in advance to get a slot. And then there are those who think that they're going to take a laptop to uni or college, sit down at uni or college and do their studies. And you guys know very well, it doesn't happen, at least not to most of you. Most likely you will be doing your assignments and your research back at home, where you could actually be working on a normal desktop. Fourth, some uni students think they need a laptop to take notes during class. This is not true, as usually lectures come with fully accessible and downloadable notes that you can study from. And let's face it, if you do have a laptop and you're going to be one of few people and you are in a lecture hall, you'd be either gaming or social networking. Am I right? Then again, I could be wrong. So you let me know down below if you are using a laptop efficiently taking notes during a lecture. And fifthly, content creators, creative professionals and gamers all know far too well the performance advantage of a traditional desktop PC over even the highest performance laptop designed for either gaming or content creation. Okay, now let's talk about those who actually need a laptop. That shouldn't be many of you, but if you do absolutely need a laptop, here's the advice. Number one, never buy a cheap end laptop for about 200 to 300 pounds or 315 to 375 the sub $400 category. Always look for a laptop with an SSD and also one which can be relatively easy to upgrade in the near future. If you are worried about the cost of an SSD, then you don't have to get a one terabyte SSD. For a three year course at uni, a 240 gigabyte SSD will be more than enough. And you can put the rest of your storage on a normal external hard drive or use online storage facilities. One solution could be to use a retailer like PC Specialist. No, this video is not sponsored by them, nor influenced by them in any way, shape or form. This is just something I did for my cousin who needed a laptop for her university course. There may be other retailers and you need to search around for them. So with PC Specialist, you can actually customize various laptop configurations to suit your needs. So in that case, you only pay for what you need. Someday, if I do decide to buy a laptop, I would definitely be ordering from somewhere like them or elsewhere because I would definitely want to customize my own laptop and inc definitely include an SSD. A more risky solution would be to get a used older generation laptop, maybe just the last generation, if you can ascertain that everything else works fine with a laptop. So you could upgrade the hard drive to an SSD. You would save tons of money and have a more faster and more performant laptop for the same price or even cheaper than you would pay for a brand new laptop for the sub 300 pounds category. Come on, we are in the smartphone era and we are so used to flash based experience for general browsing and daily tasks that it feels off whenever I use a normal desktop or laptop with a normal hard drive, which is why I've actually upgraded all my desktops to an SSD. Much like the Apple philosophy, which thrives upon the fact that if you use all their products, it's a perfect ecosystem. Similarly, if you're now a daily smartphone user like myself, you are used to much faster computer experience. Yes, your smartphone is a computer. So it would make more sense to actually switch to an SSD based hard drive for your main operating system. Think about it. Your smartphone can actually do many of a laptop's functions, sometimes even faster. So do you really need a laptop? And if you did need a computer, there are other options. A cheap and tablet also comes to mind, which will cost the fraction of a laptop. Fair enough, you'll have to forego some of the features, but many of them will allow you to plug in a mouse and keyboard and do some sort of studying on them. However, the following is my ultimate alternative. For the same price as a decent standard sized laptop, which should cost you around 500 pounds and above, so that's $625 and above, and that is to build your own desktop for under 500 pounds and use the rest of the money to get yourself a decent cheap tablet for light browsing and a general task. 
Take a look at this laptop from PC World, the cheapest I could find with a 256GB SSD on their website at the time of writing. It has an Intel i5-6200U laptop CPU, which is a dual-core CPU, ranking 3946 on the CPU benchmark, and comes with a standard size 15.6 inch screen at only 720p resolution though. Now take a look at this desktop configuration I compiled from UKPC Part Picker. Not only does it have a quad core higher performance CPU with higher clock speeds and higher benchmark rating of 5506, but it's also actually an APU, meaning it has already a graphics card chip on the CPU. This PC will allow you to get into video slash photo editing and even decent entry level gaming, which will largely outperform that laptop. Additionally, this is a full desktop, including all necessary peripherals, i.e. a 1080p monitor, not 720p like the laptop, a mouse and a keyboard, and even decent headphones, or you could substitute it for speakers. It is fully upgradable and can be turned into an even more powerful PC with a discrete graphics card. Still, at only 408 pounds, you have money left over for a cheap tablet. Amazing. And that was brand new priced component. Not used and I didn't bother shopping around. I'm sure you can get it for cheaper. The Windows license was a cheap one. I'm not sure how genuine it is. Do your research, but you can usually get genuine one for no more than 20 pounds if you know where to look. You can actually go lower than this price if you get some components used like the case, RAM, maybe even graphics card, etc or take a slightly older but cheaper desktop and upgrade some features of it. Sure, you can probably find other laptops for cheaper on other sites, like this one here at just over £300 with an SSD, but they will always underperform a similarly priced desktop. Okay, if you are worried about putting a desktop together, two things. One, stop being lazy. There's no excuse for laziness today. And two, if you are not being lazy but you're scared, then consider this. There is that one kid in your family or in your relatives or in your neighborhood who will be more than happy to put together a computer for you and you can get it usually for quite cheap. Some will even do it for free. Depends how big their arrogance is. And if you're a parent and you want to get your child a laptop, then consider helping them to build their own desktop. And it's quite easy, plenty of tutorials, and that would help them to build some skills and boost some confidence. As a general last point, we as consumers, sometimes, especially nowadays, because of the abundance of technology and how rapid they're evolving, often allow companies to produce cheap and laptops Okay, I understand there is a supply and demand curve as well to be respecting, but we allow them to produce these cheap laptops or other cheap electronics. Cheap and electronics and laptops don't last. And when they do need to be repaired, we often forego the cost of repair because we can actually buy another one similar to price for very cheap. And again, the cycle continues. It's a never ending cycle and we need to stop that. Once again, Apple does have a great business sense in that they only produce high quality electronics. Still, they are too expensive for my liking because in my situation and probably many of us, it represents a diminishing return, at least for all of us non-Apple fanboys. So there you have it, guys. This video was not meant to dissuade you from buying a cheap end laptop, but rather to help you think and consider alternatives if you haven't thought about them before. I don't know about you, but I don't want to misspend my hard-earned cash. And also, I find nothing more annoying nowadays than using a computer or a laptop that is really, really slow. Because as far as I'm concerned, right now, time is far more precious to me than money. As a last note, with the release of AMD Ryzen, which is a new line of CPU, which is disrupting the market and making Intel really worried, the future of computing is looking really good. And it's a good time to consider building a new desktop because you may not want to go for the latest processors from AMD, but the older generations will certainly be coming down in price. And I'm going to be doing a video on this upcoming. So there you have it. I do apologize for the rather lengthy video this time. I haven't done any video in a long time. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. You know what to do. Leave me a like, dislike, and consider subscribing if you haven't done so yet. You can contact me on these various platforms. And until next time, peace out.